Qualcomm is going ballistic right now. Caroline Woods joins me alongside Scott Durfee. Afternoon, guys. If this session weren't good enough, it looks like it's about to get better. Qualcomm just blasted right to and through the 190 we were looking at on the Gamma segment with Shane. I mean, wow. Well, so let's see if it pins at that 190 right now. But there it is, bing, 190, 191. Big move here. Qualcomm's been stuck in a range for months and now uh, offering a fresh bullish theme for the aftermarket and semiconductors. Caroline, what do we got? Well, we have a beat on both the top and bottom line and across the segments as well. If you take a look, fourth quarter revenue, $10.24 billion. That's an increase of 19% year over year. Wall Street was looking for more like a 14% gain with $9.9 billion. So a beat on the top line. Meanwhile, in terms of fourth quarter earnings per share, $2.69. That's up more than 30% from the year ago period. Wall Street was looking for two fifty six. dollars So that's on an adjusted level. So actually, oh yeah. 269 versus 256. So I'm right. Beat on the bottom line as well. Sorry. It's been a long day and oh, the previous night. And then if you take a look at the um, the segments, QCT, so the chips segment, uh, $8.68 billion up 18% year over year. That's a beat. Handsets up 12% year over year in line with the previous quarter. Automotive, a smaller segment, but a way that Qualcomm's been diversifying, up 68% year over year. So not as an impressive in terms of the sequential growth. Uh, last quarter, it was something like 87% growth, but still significant growth year over year. And then IoT, kind of the the... VR and uh, smart home segment up 18% year over year, $1.68 billion. Um, the automotive segment, they said that was a fifth consecutive record for quarterly revenue. And then on the other side, the licensing side, uh, revenue was $1.52 billion, up 21% year over year. And uh, the expectation was for $1.44 billion. So a beat on every uh, level that I'm seeing here, just in terms of uh, guidance, Q1 revenue between 10 and and $11.3 billion. Wall Street was looking for around $10.6 billion, so that falls in line there. And then Q1 adjusted EPS between $2.85 and $3.05 per share. Wall Street was looking for $2.86, which is only a penny higher than the low end mm. of that range. Wow. So it looks like guidance is impressing as well. So Big Qualcomm beat. ended today up more than 4%, but now it's up big in after hours, as you said. And now it's, you know, it was up about 20% year to date heading into this report. So actually underperforming in the broader sector and market, but looks like it's going to make up for that, uh, that underperformance uh, tomorrow, as long as the earnings call goes okay. <laughs> yeah, I think the earnings call is probably going to go pretty well. Let's check out that chart, 189.51. We're getting pulled right into that 190 there. Good eyes, Shane. Okay, uh, big buyback on top of it too, Scott Durfee. Everyone loves a good old buyback, $15 billion from Qualcomm. And that's not an insignificant buyback. No, it's it is good not. Portion. Yeah, that's a pretty good portion of their market cap. Yeah, and so when we, when we see, cap. Uh, yeah, so when wow. we see these kinds of things begin to happen, you know, this is a vote of confidence, not just from the analysts, not just from the company, not just from the market, but everybody combined. And when we see those kind of synergies take place, uh, we could expect either great things to continue to happen for Qual Qualcomm or, you know, is there a bubble in the future? And I don't think that's the case. Qualcomm and Arm, which we're going to be talking about also, I believe here, uh, you know, in cahoots working together um, uh, or against each other, there's a little lawsuit going on. They got some uh, legal issues that are happening between them. Qualcomm, however, though, is positioned and, and will continue, you know, through automotive and uh, uh, Internet of Things, type, IoT type of uh, data. Uh, we should we could expect Qualcomm to continue in its uh, in this rally and to continue doing it. Yeah, uh, slipping a little bit to 186 now, but I mean, to the point of the buyback, that's so big, uh, uh, Caroline, that uh, to Scott's point, you don't do that if you don't feel confident, which takes me back to the earnings call. I feel like they're going to be telling us something real nice. They, 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 they got to have something to match up with this. 
Right. Yeah, and I think that's also why we're seeing this big pop. I think that, uh, you know, I, I, I started uh, taking a peek at ARM's uh, report here. So let me go back to Qualcomm for a okay. second. I think that, you know, I think the big question for Qualcomm was, will the bounce that we started to see when it last reported with the smartphone sales, you know, kind of bouncing back, will that hold? It seems like that's going to be, you know, that is the case. So I think any commentary around that. Also, they, they still have early phases with the Snapdragon Dragon chips for AI in terms of laptops and smartphones. I don't think that, you know, I saw some analysts kind of scale back their price targets heading into this report, thinking that, uh, you know, maybe demand wouldn't be as strong for those, kind of tepid demand, I think was the word one of the analysts was using. We'll have to see in terms of commentary if, if they're in fact wrong and uh, demand for the AI Snapdragon trips, chips actually better than expected. So a few things to, to keep an eye out for, but I think the buyback certainly helping along with the fact that it's just a beat all around. Yeah, uh, really beautiful number. Seems like uh, as good as it could have gone and probably good implications for Apple iPhone sales as well. Uh, still a big player in that world. Um, all right. It also looks like it's going to be doing the heavy lifting uh, this afternoon in terms of earnings reactions. Uh, Arm coming in right now uh, a little bit lower uh, as uh, the company looks like it beat adjusted earnings 30 cents versus 26. Sales 844 versus 800. Uh, stock's actually been doing quite well uh, after debuting late last year. Arm went from 46 bucks to 144, but it still is uh, not the cheapest of the group, uh, Caroline. It's a little bit more. It seems like still the market kind of figuring out uh, this company. They traded a hundred times earnings, and the earnings have been pretty volatile. And I think that's the thing to actually consider as, as we head into this report is that Arm is actually up. 92% year to date heading into this report, 162% over the past one year. So I think the bar, I would argue, is higher for this name, especially given the valuation that you had just said. So I think that, you know, that's something important to keep in mind uh, heading into these results. That being said, it seems like it's a beat on uh, the, both the top and bottom line, adjusted EPS of 30 cents. Wall Street was looking for 26 cents or 25 cents, depending on the estimate. Uh, sales of $844 million. Expectation was for $809.5 million. So uh, that was a beat there as well. In terms of guidance, I was just pulling up, um, seeing that the guidance for uh, for the current fiscal third quarter, revenue in a range between 920 and 970 million dollars. Uh, so basically, the midpoint there would be somewhere around 945, 950, and uh, the. Average analyst estimates are just over 940, so that would be in line with expectations. And then fiscal third quarter earnings between 32 and 36 cents per share. Uh, Wall Street was looking for 34 cents per share. So guidance in line with expectations. Uh, the the uh, CEO, Renee Haas, said this quarter is all about the validation of the strategies we've been talking about. We've got some real proof points. So uh, that's, a, that's according to a Reuters headline that I saw. So I think that, uh, you know, this one we, we saw a pop, but uh, maybe some scaling back and could be because the guidance is just in line and not really blowing out of the park. Or it could be the fact that, you know, this is a stock that has run pretty far, pretty fast. And to Scott's point, these are two companies involved in what seems to be a pretty nasty legal dispute. So I'm curious if either talks about it on the calls today. Great point. Yeah, that is uh, unresolved. Uh, very good reminder. Uh, Arm, what do you think, Scott? Ready to play with the big dogs? Uh, Avalon, I mean, uh, uh, ARM, I'm yeah. not sure that they are yet. Uh, you know, I think that they've got to get through this legal issue with Qualcomm. I, I think that there's still, I, I love the guidance and I love the beats. I, I love everything that we're seeing today. I, I'm just a little bit apprehensive apprehensive to go out on a limb and say, oh, yeah, these guys are playing with the big dogs. You know, we've seen a, a ARM, uh, they've signed an MOU dig with a digitally enhanced Avalon's Thunder Bay lithium processing facility in Canada. Those are the kinds of things that uh, ARM needs to continue to 
bolster up as they're continuing in business, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to use uh, Qualcomm's industrial and edge technologies to build digital infrastructure for mining operations with IoT enabled solutions, you know, aiming for mm. uh, commercialization in coming years. And so, you know, those, uh, those things stuff. have got to get worked out, right? Yeah, that's right. But they've got to get worked out. They've got to learn to play like friends. And, and uh, when they do, Qualcomm's in a better, a bigger, better position uh, in, in this situation. We'll see how ARM responds to it. Yeah, great point. Uh, company still kind of in the throes of getting its feet on the ground and being a major competitor, being a major player. Uh, maybe it helps to throw a little bows in the meantime here and there, you know, fend off your turf. Uh, all right, all this seems to be solid enough, even though it's not like a, uh, you know, hugely uh, successful, like big aftermarket because you got a little offset here. I think Qualcomm matters a lot more, Caroline. You think Qualcomm has what? Sorry, Qualcomm matters you. a lot more. It's like, you know, they're yeah, offsetting no, a little I, bit. I think but... so. And, and the one thing that I did know, you know, I always like to track to see what analysts are doing. Sometimes they obviously have to play catch up after these reports. But ARM was already trading above its median price target of 137 um, heading into this report. So it'll be interesting to see if they, you know, if analysts make any adjustments or if they just think that this is kind of fairly priced at these levels. I will say the you know, majority is still in the buy camp for ARM. So, uh, you know, but the fact that the median price target uh, is below where it closed today, I think, is something to consider when thinking about how it could trade tomorrow. Love it. Good stuff. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Scott Durf, Caroline Woods.